Hi guys, welcome back to 9th episode of uh, Brain Attack series. So today we are speaking about different types of tube. So after stroke, uh, there is a lot of possibility that the person can suffer, uh, can suffer from swallowing problems or swallow related problems. So because of this swallowing problem, they might uh, end up with dysphagia. So dysphagia can either be at oral level or at the pharyngeal level. Oral level where they have difficulty with chewing and you can often see them drooling where the saliva comes out or the water leaks out or in the pharyngeal level where they uh, you know, end up coughing while swallowing. So these are the basic problem. To make sure the patient is eating safely and taking food in adequate quantity, uh, we might go for uh, different kinds of tubes. So the first one is like rice tube where the tube is inserted through the nose till the stomach and then we have the PEG tube or the percutaneous endoscopic gastrotomy tube or the jejunotomy tubes. So when the uh, tubes are required for a short term, we go for Riles tube. When the tube is required for a longer run or if there is a lot of nutrition deficient in the patient, then we can go for the PEG tube. Problems can arise at any level. It can be at oral level where the, food is, the patient is not able to mix the food with saliva or the patient is not able to close the lip tightly and the food might just spill out, the water might come out or he might drool uh, etc. And the next level is the uh, propulsion where the patient doesn't have good strength in his tongue to push the food back to the throat and next is the pharyngeal phase where epiglottis might be affected or the vocal folds might be affected because of the palsy and the food might enter in the windpipe and he might end up choking or coughing. So coughing while swallowing is the most common problem or a sign or symptom seen uh, in this phase of patients. And in esophageal level where the food is not uh, going smoothly down to the stomach. So in these levels any of the level might be affected and these patients are usually treated by therapist to start back their oral diet. So in the meanwhile we can go for uh, tube management. So in these tubes we have Ryan's tube which is uh, also called as nasogastric tube or orogastric tube. In nasogastric or uh, gastric tube, the tube is inserted from nose till the uh, stomach. So the food here will be given in the form of thin liquid. So any sort of thin liquid, it could be like ganji pure, or any porridge, dal water, barley water, etc. But the food should be in form of a thin liquid. So the thin liquid will be fed through these uh, tubes. The next one is the percutaneous endoscopic gastrotomy tube. In this, the PEC tube will be directly uh, surgically inserted into the stomach. So these tubes are usually used for a patients who, re who will require tube management for a longer run or a longer period. So whenever we have a patient whom we expect that he might recover fast based on the lesion of stroke, we can go for RT. If we have a patient whom we have a uh, you know where we think the patient might take a longer time to recover we'll go for a PEC tube there are other tubes like uh, jejunotomy tubes and etc but the most common tubes that uh, are used are Riles tube and the percutaneous endoscopic gastrotomy tube also called as PEC tube today i'm going to speak about the tubes which are seen in inpatients Initially, when the patient is get, getting admitted to the hospital due to any neurological condition like stroke or uh, due to any road traffic accident, they will be in a state of unconscious or they will be coma or not responding. Initially, they will be in that state. So in those cases, we might need for a ventilator support or they need any external support of oxygen. In those cases, we will do uh, ventilator support along with this endotracheal tube. The endotracheal tube is uh, keeping for a long, long term will cause uh, damage to the vocal fold. Later on, it will be a problem for the swallowing as well as for the speaking. So after uh, this ventilator support make, becomes longer term, we'll use um, a tracheostomy tube, which, uh, which helps for them breathing. In the screen, you can see the both tubes. This is endotracheal tube and this is uh, tracheostomy tube. These are the difference. 
So this tracheostomy tube, initially we will take a history when this tube has been uh, de uh, done for the patient and why the tracheostomy tube has been inserted for the patient. All the de details we have to collect as well as we have to get the details like uh, the size of the tracheostomy tube, uh, whether the status of this tracheostomy cuff is inflated or deflated, whether the patient is tolerating uh, in the initial stage of decannulation protocol, all those. We'll uh, put this tracheostomy because the patients will be having more secretion or whether they are not able to cuff and put it out the secretions from their body. Then we'll plan for a tracheostomy. Actually, we can do this uh, suctioning of tracheostomy like uh, two hours or three hours of break. It depends up the, upon the patient. Uh, actually, about this tracheostomy, it is not much thing to wear it. Actually, the, in that decanalization protocol itself, we can plan for uh, trial feeding, we can uh, monitor. At the end of that blocking stage, we will come to know whether the patient's voice is adequate or not, or any changes has to modification in voice has to be done or not. All those things when we can rule out before taking the tracheostomy itself. So it is not a thing to be much varied. Hello, my name is Keithi. I'm uh, in charge of sixth floor, in, uh, sixth floor ward. Okay. Today I'm talking about the urinary catheter, about the management of how we are taking care of the urinary catheter in patient side. So most probably we are giving the, means we are inserting the catheter to the patients like a stroke, any bedridden patients. So we are inserting that. Once of all means we have, we are, means Andre ega na wo kela patients ega la, tumba long stay patients hitta re, bedridden patients hitta, anta wori ega la na catheterization madle be karta de. Kandre infections ho adi idala irta de, so adu must and should. So now that we have care, that all under kilo patients have done that. Itara kya the tracking nantra, itu mano waqt the haagi gante. E na udhi. Ladra liye na tandre na u just to infection by prevention mali koskara na wad kya the transition marteve. For example, if one patient so recover aadru on tandre, first first na mge doctor advise mar tandre, first kya the tarang clamp mari sista. Every two hours you just watch for sensation. If she if the ha patients have a sensation, then you remove it. Some patients are not able to get the sensation, so they will again continue to get the sensation. In every two hours, they will clamp the clamp, so they will release the clamp and release the sensation. They will remove the catheter. They will remove the catheter. They will remove the catheter. They will remove the catheter in silicon catheter for 28 days and poly cell for 14 days. So they will remove the catheter in the catheter, they will remove the catheter, they will remove the catheter, मतलब यूरिनरी कैथेटर अदलब ब्लॉक अगर चांसेस चला इरता दे और मोस्ट प्रॉब्लम ना वाद कैरन तो कुडले बेको तो कुटेलन तंद्रे प्रिवेंशन रे ये कैथेटर इन्फेक्शन चला जासी अगर चांसेस रहते हैं मतलब अदलब सिलिकॉन अदलब रब्बर अला सो इट विल टेक इन्फेक्शन केलो पेशेंट फैमिली मेंबर्स चला तुम now just to family life, I'm going to educate my family. I'm going to tell you that patients are full bedridden, bedding, and bedding. And if you don't have any other catheterization, you don't have to worry about it. 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 You don't have to worry about it.